Okay, so after we got all the data into Excel spreadsheet and we have all the information that we need, there is another step I'm doing usually to eliminate cells that I'm not interested in. Uh, and those cells are plenty that is asking for too much money for the cell to begin with. And you can see over here and uh, the bids are too high. And what I do usually is I just check to see if it even makes sense to look at that property before I even look at that property. So if the bid over here is 250, 259, I already know it's 259 was posted, and this property is only worth like $300,000 or something like that, I wouldn't look at that property. I would just eliminate it from my list. Okay, I would just make it uh, a different color. I just eliminate it off my list, and I'm not gonna look at that. I'm gonna start eliminating property from my list. Uh, let's take an example of this one. The plenty wants uh, $314,000 for it. And $340,000 for it, and I'm just looking roughly, and the comps here, I don't see, I don't really see 314 selling for 385, 360, 360, 393. It's very, very tight for me. Very tight for me, very expensive. I'm not interested in that one. Um, and then I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna look at the bids. And the one that I really like is the one I actually hidden. Okay, so that's a tip I want to give to anybody who's uh, participating in the auction. Uh, the hidden bids, nobody knows what the plaintiff wants to get for them. So uh, it doesn't create as much as attention as it would create if, for example, the bid was very, very, very attractive. Okay, let's see if we can take an example. Here you go. This is an example I want to give you over here. You see the plaintiff bid 161. And all of a sudden, it just changed to 276. It won 160 something before when the just, auction just started. And they raised that bid by $100,000. Why? Because there is equity in this property. You see, the judgment is only 147. And if I, if, if I check and I see that's the first lender that is foreclosing, then and there is no second mortgage, so there is a lot of equity. There was a lot of equity in this property. Um, and that's why uh, people are bidding here aggressively. So if I'm gonna go and check this property, if I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna do title search, see, this property was bought in 97 for $140,000. So I'm gonna run my title search against the owner, okay, for 90, what was it? For 90, 97. So I'm gonna go to the property uh, recording department and I'm going to put the person's name since 1997. And this is how we do title search. And this is how we find out who is foreclosing the first lender, the second lender, who is the one that is foreclosing on this property. So what I'm going to teach you right now is how to find out who is foreclosing that property. And I hope that sale is not going to go away too quickly so I can take it as an example. So basically I made a search here and I can see the warrant that did here same deed that we saw that it was bought in 1997 basically that's what i'm looking at i'm looking to find the deed and my search would start from that time from 1997 up to today you see the chain of title here that's the first mortgage i was taking 126 and if you click the doc extension it will tell you that it was released in 202 so I'm going to go and I'm going to check one by one mortgages to see which one is outstanding. And then I'm going to see if that's the first lien position. This one we're already satisfied. So I'm going to check this next one for 136 was taken in uh, 202. And uh, as you recall, the previous one released in 202. So it makes sense that they took another mortgage. And that was released in 203. So it makes sense they maybe took another mortgage in 203. And here you go. Uh, there is an, another mortgage here. Morcovia, smaller mortgage, it was also released. So all of those mortgages were released. I'm looking for the one that it's open. It was never released. And this one was assigned to Bank of New York, Maryland. There, was, there is a mortgage here that was assigned to in 2013. So I wanna see, I wanna see, what I wanna know is, I wanna know which mortgage are they foreclosing on? right that's what i want to know so i'm going to show you a way to do uh, a great title search okay 
and to understand which position they're trying to actually foreclose on over here. So if I go and I put the case number in the clerk of court docket, so I already showed that example before, and that's gonna show me all of the parties that have interest to that property. It's gonna show me the plaintiff, the one who is foreclosing, and it's gonna show me all the par parties is eliminated. And as you can see, there is another banker, Bank of New York. So the first lien position at Federal National Mortgage Association is foreclosing on everybody else, including the second lien position, which is Bank of New York. And for me to understand and to really understand that, uh, to check it, I can go and see the complaint that the plaintiff filed. So that's a way for me to understand which mortgage they are foreclosing upon. Okay, there is two ways to search for it. You can go to the complaint and you can go to another document called the list pendants, which is gonna which, which can tell you which for which mortgage they're trying to foreclose on. So if I'm gonna go to the recording department over here and I'm gonna see list pendants and the case number I'm looking is 193629. So 19629 is list pendants. Let's see, not this one. Here we go. That's the foreclosure we are looking at. See, it references the same case number here, 3629. It gives you the plaintiff, it gives you all the defendants, and it gives you uh, the property address here. Um, sometimes they also give you uh, the mortgage which they are trying to foreclose. They don't tell you which mortgage they're trying to foreclose here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that complaint and over here, it's going to show you exactly which mortgage they are suing for. And you can see they're suing for a 2003 defender, executed delivery. So they're suing for the 2003 mortgage and they tell you the book number and page number. The book number is 35715 and the page is uh, 1090. That's the mortgage that is foreclosing. And I need to see what is uh, that mortgage, what is their strength in terms of priority. Is it the first mortgage or is it the second mortgage? So I, they already give me the book number and page number. And if I go back to my uh, uh, searches over here, I should be able to find that same mortgage. Um, and let's see again, what was the book number and page number? 190, 1090. For closing, oh, 1090. I'm just going to take off this name, make it easier. And here you go. 35715-1090, that's the mortgage. As you can see, we already checked this mortgage was released. This mortgage was released. Right, if I click here, it was released. Showing you it was released. And then there was another mortgage here. That was released. And then you have this mortgage here that they are foreclosing. So that's the first mortgage position basically because that's the mortgage that was recorded first. And you can see it was assigned in 2015 to federal mortgage. So you know as a fact right now, we know as a fact, this is still going that they are buying the first uh, lien position, which is this mortgage. And the Bank of New York, the other mortgage, uh, probably they're telling you. They're telling you also, they're doing a title search for you. They're telling you how much is owed. And they're telling you about the other lien positions. You see, the Bank of New York uh, may have a claim as well in that property. And here is the instrument number that uh, that mortgage was, 1105. That was the second mortgage, 1105, if you can find it here. Here is 1105, right after. So the mortgage that was recorded after was actually a second mortgage that was assigned as well. So we're looking at two mortgages that are outstanding here, 154 and 38, but the first mortgage is gonna foreclose today and it's gonna eliminate, okay? It's going to eliminate all the inferior, all of the inferior parties of interest. Okay, in that foreclosure. So I'm going to go again here to my screen and I'm going to show you that Federal National Mortgage Association was able to name all these inferior lien, lien uh, uh, holders and eliminate them in that, in that foreclosure. 
So the second mortgage is going to eliminate whoever going to buy this property here is buying the first lead position. Okay, so that's that's a way to understand if you are buying a good title or you're buying a bad title. You know, when you buy mortgage foreclosure, you should always look to buy the first lien position. The same the same token, this uh, mortgage, the second mortgage here, okay, Countrywide Bank, uh, Treasury Bank, they could uh, technically initiate their own foreclosure, okay, and bring their property to sell using different case number. So if you didn't see that you, you are actually buying a second mortgage, you would have this judgment against you as well because the second mortgage is only owed $30,000, but the first is owed one forty seven dollars over here. So you'd be paying the retail price for a second mortgage at auction and still be obligated to pay the first lien position. And you don't want, you don't want to do that. So you always have to check who is foreclosing and if you're buying a mortgage foreclosure, make sure it's the first lien priority. All right, so whoever bought this property for three or seven, okay, bought the first lien priority. If I wanna go and I do, uh, uh, he bought it for three or seven, if we wanna go and uh, check that property and see its value and what we think it's worth, uh, we can do it here. Uh, we have the spreadsheet, we have the reports, where we can just uh, uh, make the calculation here and uh, do the math. But before even placing a bid, you must uh, make sure that you're buying the right position. Okay, I want to emphasize it again. And uh, it's very important because if I go through the auction today and I'm going to go one by one, I'm going to see a lot of people that made a mistake and bought the wrong position. And as a consequence of that, lost a lot of money. So when you participate in the auction, make sure you're buying the right position. You're buying, if you're buying a mortgage foreclosure, ask yourself if you're buying first in position and go check it out.